Hey, what's up guys? Dr. D here. Today we're going to be getting into Ableton Live for beginners. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of Ableton Live and what it does and uh, general layout and stuff so you can get started. So let's get started. Okay, when you open up Ableton, um, you, uh, you know, you have the Ableton window open up. It looks something like this. You're going to have four tracks initially set up in here, two MIDI tracks, and two audio tracks. MIDI tracks, of course, being something that's connected to your MIDI controller or keyboard. So when you play the keyboard over here, um, those lights kind of, um, the input goes into those MIDI tracks and you can put whatever instrument, whatever sound on those MIDI tracks um, and, uh, and make music with MIDI. Audio tracks, these uh, second two here, are um, tracks that you would record audio with. So it could be like a microphone, you know, plugged into your interface that you're um, recording vocals or instruments with, or you can plug a, a guitar directly into your interface and you can record that with audio tracks as well. Okay, so let's go over some of the general layout of um, the window here. Um, at the top, you have um, a series of buttons in the top left. Um, tap, I'm not sure what link is, we'll skip that one. Tap is for setting a metronome tempo, um, which is uh, what you'll see in the second window right here. So 120 is the beats per minute BPM. That's like the tempo tempo of your song. And you can adjust this number by clicking and dragging up and down or clicking in here and typing a tempo with the, the numbers in your keypad. Tap tempo allows you to hum a song like you got a beat in mind and an idea going and you'd be like one, two, three, four, one, two. That automatically kind of sets a tempo to what you're clicking the mouse as. So it's just a fast way of tapping the tempo and getting uh, kind of a general uh, close estimate of what that tempo was that you're feeling, okay? 4-4, um, four, four, this is your time signature. Um, Basically, you know, uh, you can change through different time signatures. You can do, you know, six, eight, three, four, whatever. Different, uh, different time signatures, different meters. Um, this next button with these two buttons, these two like you know circles right here, this is going to be turning on and off your metronome. So if you want to hear the clicking metronome thing going as you are playing music, you select that, and whenever you hit play or hit record, it will click with the metronome. There's a little arrow to the right of that which you can select what kind of count in you want. So if you're going to be playing a guitar along with a drum beat or something, you might want four beats or one bar of tempo clicks, metronome counts to, um, to kind of get yourself started with. So you can select to have one bar, two bars, or no bars um, when you hit record. Okay, so this is your time counter right here. This is um, bars and beats. Um, over here you have play, stop, and record. This is play, stop, and record for the arrangement view. So in Ableton you have two different windows. You have session view, which is the view where you have almost like a track fader that goes up and down. Um, and uh, you also have uh, arrangement view, which you can get to and toggle back and forth between by hitting tab. Um, arrangement view is more of the uh, linear sort of presentation of, of your different audio tracks. Now the play, the stop, the record, these three buttons are for recording in arrangement view, not session view. Not recording into this view, but recording into this view. Okay. Um, there's a series of buttons up here. This uh, plus sign means that you're going to record additional stuff on top of your existing um, MIDI. So if you were going to record a MIDI track, um, you would play some MIDI notes and you would arm the track. You would hit record and then you would type some MIDI notes and those notes would be programmed into the MIDI track. Okay. And uh, if you had the add button, you would add additional MIDI notes. So as you hit MIDI notes, when you recorded on top of this, you're adding additional notes. Okay, and if that was not on, it would wipe out 
those existing MIDI notes. So when you hit record and you record it over a MIDI track, it would wipe that out and put the new MIDI notes and cover up all the other stuff. So um, uh, let's see here. Um, loop playback is another thing you might use. There's a lot of things going on here, so I'm just going to cover the basics. Um, so if you wanted to loop a two bar section of this of this song, you can select that area by clicking and selecting there. Um, Control L is a way of setting up a loop bar. And with this loop playback selected, as you played this loop back, it would constantly loop and loop and loop. If this was not selected, it would just kind of continue working. So if you wanted to work in that loop situation where you're recording a take and recording a take and kind of just playing over and over on one section of of your of your of your song here, you would um, you would enable that loop. Okay, cool. So, um, like I was saying earlier, there are two ways of working with Ableton. You can work in session view or arrangement view. Okay, so when you're working in session view, this is a great um, mode of Ableton to kind of get a creative flow going. Um, and the way this is going to work is you have to arm a track before you record. Whether it's MIDI or instrument sounds or audio tracks, you have to arm these tracks by clicking on these, the button at the bottom that turns red. Um, the S button is for soloing the track, and then the uh, numbered button that turns yellow or turns gray, that's basically having the track engaged or disengaged. So when you disengage all the tracks, you're, you won't hear any audio. If you just disengage one, you'll only hear that track. So it's like, you know, arming or just, you know, allowing playback and volume coming out of that. Um, in the, uh, in each of the, tr the, uh, the, the, the tracks, horizontal tracks here, vertical tracks here in session view, um, if you want to record something, it's going to record it into a clip. Okay, so you've got this grid going on here where this is MIDI track one and the if the track is armed, these little boxes will turn into a circle, which is a record button. So if you wanted to record something into this MIDI track or record something onto this audio track, you would need to arm it and then you would need to click this record button. And I will now record voice into this clip blah 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 okay hit stop hit the space bar and now I have this um, loop or this little clip um, of audio that I've recorded that will maybe play back here okay cool so you can hear that you know the audio track is 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 playing that audio that I recorded um, so what I meant by the freeform um, creative process that uh, is really kind of nice and conducive to this this uh, the session view is you can like think okay I want to create a drum beat all right so I need some drums um, on the left side of the screen I have this little browser window situation where I can choose like drums I can click around here in the category of drums I find a drum beat I like I can drag and drop this onto a MIDI track and uh, it's going to add that drum um, beat collection, that, that, that drum rack with all kinds of pre-recorded drums sounds all set to different um, keys on the keyboard. As I play my MIDI keyboard, you can hear those sounds firing off. I have a drum kit, so I can go ahead and set my tempo for my metronome, click record here. Let me find my kick drum. There's my kick drum, and I can make a little beat quickly. Two, three, four. Okay, I hit stop, boom. I just recorded a drum loop. I hit play, there's my drum loop. Okay, cool. What do I need now? How about a bass? So I can type in bass up here in my little um, search bar at the top. I go to maybe instrument category because I'm looking for a bass, it's an instrument. And uh, find some kind of bass. Here's a bass. Okay, whatever. How about that one? Okay, so I can, I like that. I'm going to double click on it instead of dragging it. I could drag it onto MIDI or I could just double click and it's going to add a new track um, in that existing track. Um, and then I have my, 
oops, sorry, that's my drums. I need to arm this specific track right here. And there's my, you know, my, my synthy bass sound. Um, so what I could do now is record some of this on top of that drum loop. Two, three, four. Okay, so there we go, there's a little loop. When I hit play again, you notice that these both have the yellow, or I'm sorry, the green play buttons selected. When I hit my space bar, it's gonna play them both at the same time. If I don't want both of these to play, I can, I can stop that. Um, and then I just keep riffing and riffing and riffing. Instruments, you know, I add MIDI instruments, I record voices and guitars, and I just kind of just keep populating these scenes with all these, uh, with all these little loops. And I can kind of start creating a song and coming up with ideas in a very fast-flowing manner. Um, so uh, that's kind of what's going on with the session view. Um, I can copy and paste these things, you know, Control C. Control V and paste these things and drag them around and reposition these and kind of form my song. And the idea is that you're going through kind of rows of this um, of this grid where row one we call these scenes, but over here you can see that's like scene one, scene two. These are like the different sections of my song, um, and I can start kind of constructing the form of my song like that. Um, a couple other things going down on in the um, in each of these. Uh, horizontal um, uh, tracks is the inputs and outputs, um, what kind of monitoring, a lot of complex stuff. Sometimes you see all these things, sometimes you don't. There's also sends, these are like effects, sends and returns. So when you open up Ableton initially, you have a reverb and a delay um, effects return track. It's on the right side of the screen here. And these effects returns are like reverb and delay. Um, and the way it works is if you have your drum kit here and you want to have some reverb, there's send A and send B. Here's send A is reverb, send B is delay. So I want some, you know, I'm going to solo this track so we can hear it, but I'm going to hit play on my drum kit and I'm going to turn up send A. Now you hear reverb and you notice that there's now signal flying through this return track. So it's just another track in parallel that has only reverb on it and I can send portions of whichever track I want to have more reverb or less reverb. I can send those through that reverb track over there. Um, okay, cool. Um, over here on the right side of the screen, you notice there are all these little yellow dots. These are showing and hiding different portions of the, um, the different tracks, okay? So IO is input and output. So if you wanna set a certain audio interface input, you know, if you have eight channels or 16 channels, you can choose which input is feeding signal into that. And then the output is usually just kind of going out of your speakers, your main stereo outputs. But I can choose to have something monitored um, or not monitored. So you notice when I, um, let's see, see show, show this. So when I have my microphone enabled here and I'm talking, you see signal right here, but you don't hear it. So I'd have to turn on auto for my monitor to be automatically, hello, hello. Okay, that's not working. Input, check, check, check. Oh, I still loaded, that's why. Hello, 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 hello. So you can hear through the speakers now that I'm getting signal coming out of that, uh, of that, uh, of that one, of the monitors, right? So it's basically, when it's gray, you're not hearing anything in your headphones or anything coming out of the speakers. When you go to auto, hey, 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 you start to hear things in your headphones so the monitoring is you know whether you're hearing or not hearing any of the sound um let's see here uh the inputs and outputs monitoring that's going to be under the io portion showing of that um of that track sends these are the sends effect sends that we talked about just a second ago the returns these are the effect return tracks i can create more return tracks by right clicking and going to insert return track and now i have return B and I could go over here grab some sort of effect you know maybe I grab like you know I don't know uh, how about distortion or something overdrive find overdrive and I drag and I drop that onto return B and now I can send some of my voice or some of the drum kit through the return track and let me show the sends 
and then my return track is B for overdrive. Now I've got some distortion going on on that uh, return track there. So I can add more return tracks, I can change the device. Um, as I click and select each of these individual tracks, sometimes things populate a bottom window pane down here. That bottom window pane is the device view. So in the, 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 the device view or, or the editor view. Okay, so in the case of my overdrive, when I clicked on that, here is the overdrive device. I can adjust how it's working, the parameters of the overdrive device. I can add other devices in here and just stack devices um, if I want to get crazy with things. But basically, you just put in different devices in this bottom window and you can adjust those devices. It's like all your different plugins that are kind of going on and what the signal is traveling through from left to right. Now, in terms of a audio or MIDI, or MIDI track, there is the device view of the synthesizer or the device view of the drum rack that's going on down here. If I use Shift Tab, I can switch to the MIDI editor or the audio editor view. You know, up here I had, um, well, just now let me record some audio real quick so you can see it. Check, 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 microphone check. All right, cool. Now we've got some audio. I can. If I select my audio track, I can see my audio um, here that I can edit and warp and do all this other crazy stuff to whatever I'm trying to do to it. I can I can edit that audio down here, or um, I can go to the device view and I can add something like an EQ on my voice. So I can go ahead and do some EQing to my voice and pitch correction or whatever I want to do. Um, the bottom pane there basically is device view and or the editor view. So shift tab allows you to go between the editor view and the device view. You know, and I can just keep stacking up different um, you know, devices, compressor, phaser, blah blah blah. As I do my processing, I can work in the different devices and change the settings of those devices and then I can edit the MIDI and or audio like that. So, you know, here's a MIDI editor. We can edit MIDI down here and do all the stuff we need to do, draw in things and move things around and all that MIDI editing, which I'll get into another video. Tab, I'm sorry, shift tab changes it between that and the drum rack device. So I can change, you know, what these sounds are and mess with them and do all the stuff with the devices, or I can come over here and I can edit the MIDI notes. Okay, so um, that's a little bit about the arrangement view when we go to or session view when we go to arrangement view hitting tab um, I have been working previously in the session view quite a bit so I have these sounds going on but when I switch over to this view you notice this is kinda grayed out if I want to start working now in this view um, I need to change the focus to be on arrangement view this little box up here this orange box with the play button if I select that, now my focus is into arrangement view. So usually you're in one or the other, or you transition from one into the other. Usually what I'm doing is I'm freeform, kind of coming up with ideas, and then once I get to a certain point, I'm ready to start kind of working in that linear format, I will go ahead and switch over to this view and then stay here for the rest of the time. But it's all the same stuff. If I'm into um, the audio track or I'm into the drum kit track, I um, select that and select the clip, and I have my editing down here in the editor view, shift tab. Here's my device view. Same thing with audio. Here's my devices and my audio track. Um, shift tab, I have, um, I don't see my audio anywhere. I guess I'd have to record some new audio. Check, check, check. Let me record that. Check, 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 check. Okay, now you can see I have audio here because I just recorded some and I can edit this audio and warp it, time stretch it, or whatever I'm trying to do to it. I can edit um, also within the um, timeline region of each of these tracks. So editing in here sometimes doesn't work so well um, with audio. Really editing in audio um, in arrangement view is easier to be done up here inside the actual um, linear part of the track. So I'm like, you know, copying and pasting, I can paste stuff, I can duplicate stuff. Command D, Command D for duplicate. Copy is Command um, C, Cut is Command X, Paste is Command V. Those are some of the useful keyboard shortcuts. Zooming in and out, my cursor goes up 
onto the any of the um, like the number area of the ruler up there, and it turns into the, the the magnifying glass symbol. I click and I drag up and down. I can change my view, zooming in and out. If I'm in a MIDI view. In my MIDI editor, it's kind of the same deal. My magnifying glass pops up when I'm in the area where the numbers are. I can click and drag up and down and zoom in and out position-wise. I can shift to left and right. Over here, it's the same deal. So I can make my MIDI, uh, my different you know notes of, uh, in the MIDI uh, piano roll, I can kind of zoom in and out and show less or more of that by sliding left and right. Okay, um, a lot of there's a billion things going on here in here in Ableton. I just kind of want to kind of give you some of the surface stuff to kind of get you started. Another thing um, that you want to know about Ableton is how to get into the preferences menu. So command comma will bring up the preferences, audio preferences for setting your interface inputs and outputs. You can change the buffer size. Buffer size is good to do and be aware of um, and manage. Uh, if you're recording stuff and you don't want to hear like a weird delay in the headphones, you want to record at a low sample rate because that's going to let it's going to make the latency and the delay that you hear in your headphones less. Um, if you go to a higher latency um, or a higher um, buffer size, you're going to have more latency, more delay because it's more accurately sampling things as it plays it back through the headphones. So you know, the higher the quality, the more there's a delay. If you're recording, that's an issue because you hear like this weird echo. But if you're playing back, it's not a big issue. You, you want to hear higher quality sounds. So when you're playing back and editing and stuff like that, you want to be at high sample rate. When you're recording, low um, buffer size, uh, lower buffer size for recording. Okay, you can change the look and feel. You can, you know, library and plug-in, library access, like all the kind of preferences are, are hidden in here in the preferences menu. Okay, cool. Um, uh, yeah, that should be enough to kind of get you playing around. I have a video on editing MIDI and a video on um, other aspects of using Ableton Live, so you can gleam a lot of the more detailed stuff from that. But uh, yeah, um, just for today's purpose, uh, I wanted to just give a quick little casual run through of Ableton and introduce to you guys what it is and how it works. And um, from there, you just kind of start playing around with it. And, learn through trial and error and watch more videos so uh hope you got something out of it take care we'll see you on the next video peace